For the past few years, I've seen this plugin used by major mixing engineers, seen lots of YouTube videos, and everyone seems to like this plugin a lot. Like if it was a game changer or something. And I'm talking about Sooth 2 by Oak Sound. So at some point, I decided to jump on my phone, go on Instagram, and send a message to Oak Sound, and they sent me a copy of Sooth 2 for me to try out for a few months. And I was able to use it on the few mixes I was working on. But the big question remains, is Sooth 2 overrated? My answer is simple, and it goes like this. Hey, what's going on? The Chris Selim here from Mixdown Online. I hope you're well. Let's jump right in. Now, before I begin, I just want to mention that this is not a sponsored video. I'm the one who reached out to Oak Sound, and here we are. So if we look at Sooth 2, like the default preset that loads up when you open the plugin, is actually pretty good. There's also other presets uh, that I could use, you know, but I tend to start with the default one and go from there. Basically what Sooth 2 is, it's a dynamic resonance suppressor and it works in a very cool way. So it detects all the resonances automatically and suppresses them out uh, from the sound, which is quite nice. And I'll show you how I use the Sooth uh, on a vocal, on guitars, uh, also on the overheads, which is quite cool. And there's also a special thing that I did with Sooth that can work pretty well, but you'll have to stick around to know what that is. Uh, so if we start with Sooth on the vocal, now on that vocal, the mix is already done, uh, but for this example, I bypassed all of my EQs. Uh, I only have compression on that vocal. And I start by adding Sooth uh, as a first plugin in the chain. So let's listen to the vocal without Sooth. To find you, I need to find a place to run to. Okay, if I activate Sooth, give it all to find you. I need to find a place to run to. So you can see all those resonances out of these frequencies being suppressed. Okay, um, and now the way that works is very simple. Uh, the more I lift one band, the more I tell Sooth where to work and Sooth will uh, suppress more of those frequencies, basically. Okay, so boosting doesn't mean that I'm boosting frequencies or resonances. I'm actually doing the opposite, okay? So I'm actually cutting more uh, resonance out of that uh, those frequencies. Find you. I need to find a place to... So now you can see that Sooth is actually working on several frequencies out of this vocal, uh, but I actually emphasize a bit more by default anyways, on the top mid-range of that vocal sound. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna keep it as is for now, but I'm just gonna bring that down and the focus also on the lower mid section. Give it all to find you. I need to find a place to run to. So by doing it this way, I'm actually smoothing up uh, a bit of the higher, higher mid-range, uh, high frequencies, uh, where I can get some sibilance, you know? And Sooth will act a bit like a de will, you know? But in a bit more of a transparent way, uh, I have to say. Um, and I'm also taming down or, you know, getting a bit more control over the low mids of that vocal sound. So by doing so, I'm going to smooth out my vocal sound and everything is going to stay very natural. And this is what I like about this plugin. So let's have a quick listen. Give it all to find you. Okay, without. Give it all to find you. Give it all to find you. So it's very subtle, you know, but you can actually tell that the vocal sounds way more smooth. Now, the thing is, even if I use it in a very subtle way, um, harshness, honkiness, uh, resonances will build up uh, on several tracks throughout the mix, you know, and working with this plugin actually helps me out uh, to get way more control over those resonances that can build up on the full mix. So on this vocal, I have Sooth as a first plugin uh, in, on the chain. And I also have one instance of Sooth as a last plugin in the chain. And let's try a preset this time around and go uh, on vocals. And then let's look for uh, a DS or so DS and that's that. There you go. So this is what it gives me if I want to use Sooth as ADS -er. so let's try it out. Give it all to find you. 
I need to find a place to run to. All right. I need to find a place to run to. Okay, let's add soothe. I need to find a place to run to. Pretty cool. Okay, let's add some depth. I need to find a place to run to. Okay, this is a very good spot to tell you more about the parameters that we have with uh, Soothe. So Depp uh, will actually I give need you to find more a place to run suppression. To. And even if I take a lifetime... Okay, uh, then there's sharpness and there's also a selectivity. So if I increase I sharpness... Find a place to run to. You can see even if I take a that the cuts are actually sharper, okay? So this is basically what sharpness is going to do. And selectivity... I need to find a place to run to. Again, we'll give you a bit more uh, focused and more... It's going to be more selective on what it is working on. And then we have have the soft and hard mode so soft mode like it says here uh, is more transparent easier to adjust and more suited for uh, to dynamic material and hard will react more uh, to the level of the material so I usually stick it to soft most of the time and that works pretty well uh, there's an attack and release um, a bit like a compressor okay and also a mix uh, parameter here if you want to just blend that with the original signal so pretty straightforward. Okay, let's get back to the deesser. I'm just gonna increase the depth so we can hear the effect a bit more. Yes, I know you're worth it. Without. Yes, I know you're worth it. Yes, I know you're worth it. Even if I add lots of suppression, it sounds very smooth and transparent which is quite nice. So that could be a very good tool to use as a de -esser or in combination with a real de -esser, where they both do a bit of the job to make the result transparent. I now have Sooth on electric guitars. Let's have a listen. So if I add Sooth, just to tame down the harshness that I have on those guitars. I like that. Sounds way better. Now I hope you can hear what I'm hearing. Hope it translates well on YouTube. So make sure you have a good pair of headphones or good studio monitors when you watch this video. Sooth can also work very well on acoustic guitars, also on an electric guitar solo. You know, Sooth will do a very, very cool job. It also does a very good job on drum overheads and on drum rooms. Let's have a listen to the rooms. Just focus on the top end. Okay, I'm gonna increase the depth just so we can hear the effect. I'm gonna bypass it right away. I'm overdoing it. Let's balance it out. Yeah, I kind of like that because I'm getting lots of hi-hats on the room mics and it does add way more control on those hats, which in my opinion sounds way better, but it's always a matter of balance. If I add too much, it's gonna start to sound dull with what I'm working on, like with the frequencies I'm focusing on right now, you know? So it's just a matter of balancing that out uh, to get to the sweet spot. Another cool way I'm able to use Soothe is in sidechain. Instead of using sidechain compression, if I need to, I can use Sooth to replace the compressor. Um, and I actually tried it out on this mix to get a bit more out of my kick drum when the bass is playing at the same time. So let's check it out here. So I have Sooth inserted on my bass uh, channel bus and I made sure to activate the sidechain option directly on the plugin and from that point uh, right on top I have the activate or deactivate sidechain and then I have my kick drum channel that is used as a sidechain source and this is what I get.
So every time the kicks comes in, Sooth uh, suppresses the low frequencies. But again, in a very cool automatic way, very dynamic, very nice. So if I bypass it, focus on the kick drum. Now I hear the difference pretty well, but just in case you just uh, don't hear it because of YouTube or whatever, and I'm just gonna increase the depth so you can hear the effect a bit more. Okay, so we get the idea, bring that back. So by using it in sidechain uh, with my kick, and bass, I'm getting a bit more out of my kick drum, more definition all the way through, uh, even when the, the kick drum plays at the same time as the bass guitar, which works very well. Now, to be honest with you, I really enjoy working with this plugin. The more I use it, the more I like it. It just has a very nice way to tone shape a sound in a natural and very smooth way. Now, it might look like a dynamic EQ, but it doesn't react the same way at all. I don't know what's happening under the hood, but it's definitely like a combination of several things blended together in a very intelligent way, which makes this plugin very useful on several types of tracks. And not only in mixing, it can also be very useful in mastering. So if you ask me if this plugin is overrated, it is definitely not. <laughs> so this is my take on Sooth 2 by Oak Sound. I'm going to leave the link down below. There's a trial a version of the plugin if you want to try it out. If you do, come back on this video, leave your comments and let me know what you think about working with Sooth 2. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share and to like and also to subscribe to this channel. And yes, please do subscribe to this channel because I am that close to reach 100,000 subscribers thanks to you. Until next time, take care and see you.